straight to the High Court because we have breaking news. Here's Francis. Uh, Matthew, we're getting word that the judge is still talking, but it is going, the decision in this case regarding Dwayne Chambers and the British Olympic Association going towards the British Olympic Association. It seems that as things stand, Dwayne Chambers has failed in his injunction, injunction to overturn that bylaw 25, which prevents him from running the Olympic Games, and he won't be going to Beijing at the moment. Don't forget he failed a drugs test. The British Olympic Association is not unique in having a law that forbids people who failed a drugs test from going to the Olympic Games, but there certainly aren't many countries around the world that do it. That's what they were defending today. We understand that they have successfully defended their own bylaw and that Dwayne Chambers will not be going to Beijing. And Francis, uh, presumably the judge, just going through all of the reasons uh, that he has come to this conclusion, just remind us of the arguments that were actually put to him from both sides. Well, Judge Colin Mackay has been listening over the last two days. Don't forget, we initially thought this was going to happen on Wednesday, then it was deferred until Thursday, and then even on Thursday he said that he wanted more time to consider. Uh, the arguments on behalf of Dwayne Chambers was that it was pure restraint of trade and against competition law. Uh, the judge is still talking and, and summing up the case, I understand. The BOA, on the other hand, said this would be very bad news for their sports, for athletics, for the Olympics in 2012. They said it isn't restricted trade because there is no money made from the Olympics. There were counter arguments on both sides. But as far as we know, we understand that Dwayne Chambers will not be going to Beijing. It seems to have gone so far with the British Olympic Association. Yes, Francis, and that is also what uh, Adam Parsons, our sports correspondent inside of that courthouse, is also filing. That news that Dwayne Chambers has failed in that Beijing bid. Uh, just to, to explain to our audience, uh, the, the judge will actually go through, he's been looking at this for a long time, actually go through all of the reasons, but that uh, conclusion does seem that he has failed in that bid. And there will be a long list of former competitors gold medalists even, who actually will be absolutely relieved to hear that news because uh, they were very worried about the sort of message it would actually be sending out if he was on the plane. Absolutely. There was a, a petition signed by 100 leading athletes just a month ago saying it wasn't necessarily aimed at Dwayne Chambers, but they wanted to uphold this bylaw, uphold this principle that if you had failed a drugs test, you could not ever be part of the British Olympic team. A lot of big names are on that list of Stephen Redgrave, Kelly Holmes. Conversely, on the other side, there have been names in the world of athletics, great names like Ed Moses, the former gold medalist from America at 400 metres hurdles. He was saying that Dwayne Chambers should be allowed to compete. He should be allowed to run in the Olympic Games. But just yesterday, I was talking to the man who supplied Dwayne Chambers with his drugs, Victor Conte in San Francisco, who was saying that it, this is effectively what he called a death sentence imposed, and there should be a level playing field across the whole world of athletics. But um, as we understand it, as we're hearing that the British Olympic Association is defending that, uh, that injunction. And uh, let's show you the live shot now. We expect that uh, Dwayne Chambers is going to be coming out with his legal team. Of course, the question now we're starting to ask ourselves is where they go from here. Um, there is provision, we understand, for an appeal. But time is running out because the team for the Beijing Olympics has to be named by early Sunday morning. Uh, so we're hearing, we are getting confirmation Dwayne Chambers has definitely failed in his appeal to get an injunction against that bylaw 25. And Francis, what do you think that means then for him and his career? I mean, in effect, is this the, the end of that career? In effect, it appears that it is. He is 30 years of age, um, arguably past his peak as a sprinter. Some people actually consider that the time he had out through his ban probably gave him a little extra time because he wasn't competing uh, as hard. Um, don't forget Dwayne Chambers has suffered financial penalties as well. He had to return all the prize money he won while he was taking drugs. Uh, so his QC yesterday, Jonathan Crystal, said that if it does go against him, he will simply walk off into the sunset. That remains to be seen. It does appear at the moment that this is the end of a quite eventful athletics career. Uh, you say quite eventful athletics career. I mean, it's worth reminding our viewers just the exact circumstances of his original ban, because, of course, he was found to be a cheat. He was given a penalty, which was uh, a couple of years, and his 
whole basis for today's challenge was that uh, he got that ban and has actually served the two years time and, and now he should have been allowed to move on but uh, that is not what the judge has actually decided here. No, and, and we, we must also be quite clear that we're referring to the Olympic Games. Dwayne Chambers can compete as an athlete. The fact that promoters around Europe don't want to hire him this summer is, is a completely different matter. Uh, that, that's for them to call. Uh, he competed in the Olympic trials last weekend and recorded a time of 10 seconds flat, the ninth fastest time in the world this year. He can compete should people want to have him at their meetings. We're simply referring to this bylaw that the British Olympic Association will not have anyone who's failed a draft in their team. It seems that bylaw has been upheld by the judge today. Francis, thanks for bringing us that breaking news so quickly. Let's return to the live picture outside the front door because within the coming minutes we will see Dwayne Chambers and his lawyers emerge from those doors and uh, give their reaction to that news that he has lost that bid to get a temporary High Court injunction against that Olympic ban. Now, while we're waiting, of course, for them to come through those doors, uh, we can talk now to John Regis, the former Olympic 200 metres silver medalist and a former coach of Dwayne Chambers. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, you've obviously heard the news that he's lost in his bid. What's your reaction? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I've got to say, I think it's the right result from a, from a pure um, a reality situation that, you know, you know, Dwayne made the unfortunate choice uh, to go down that route. Um, the bylaws was in place well before Dwayne, you know, went down that route. So, you know, the end result was he knew if he was to, to be found guilty that this would happen. Um, and, I, and I think it sends a message to all the, the sportsmen and women out there that, you know, we're not going to tolerate um, individuals who, who cheat um, and let them come to the greatest sporting event in the world and I think it's right. I think other nations should follow um, in our footsteps because I think it's the way that will help prevent athletes from cheating in sports. Now does that mean then there's no room for rehabilitation in that sense? I mean his legal team and Dwayne Chambers himself um, obviously showed arguments, uh, strong arguments that said that all right former bad boy turned good, he'd cleaned up his act, he was a talented athlete. Should that really be the end of his career in terms of competing in something like the Olympics? Well he's, he's allowed to compete in the European Championships, he competes on the international circuit of athletics so he's, a, he's actually allowed back in under the IWF rules but you know what you've got to understand is the Olympic Games is a dream of all individual athletes, sportsmen and women. They train hard, they want to go there and compete against the best in the world. And when somebody who cheats and is then allowed back into the sport, it, it doesn't send the right message. And the message that it does send is, OK, we allow you back into the family of world athletics. But unfortunately, coming into the greatest event, you're not allowed because you took the, the choice of cheating. And we have to, you know, make sure that, you know, the, the, the cleans cleanliness of the sport is kept. And that people understand that it's not going to be tolerated. Now, we're, we're looking at pictures here uh, of Dwayne Chambers uh, arriving at court. You know him. How do you think he'll be feeling? Oh, obviously, he, he, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be gutted. You know, there's no other way I can put it. I mean, he, he obviously wanted to compete at Olympic Games because he knows that's the pinnacle of sport. Um, you know, he's going to feel hard done by. He's going to feel as though, um, you know, people have gone against him. But, you know, unfortunately, when you make a decision like that, there are repercussions and this is one of them. Now he may of course appeal, you obviously don't think that would be the right course of action to take now? Well I'm, I'm sure he, he may appeal but I'm, I'm the appeal I would imagine and, and would hope that wouldn't be in effect before the Olympic Games because you know the decisions have been made you know I, I was, to be honest I thought that he would actually win the case um, but I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy that you know, he, he, he wasn't allowed to go to the Olympics. I, I think, you know, I do feel sorry for Dwayne. I mean, he's, he's a nice kid who made a very, very bad choice. But unfortunately, you know, you've, 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 you've got to understand that cheaters cannot prosper in this sport. He's seen to be a very talented athlete. Do you think, as his legal team have said, that there's no instance of a suspended athlete returning to competition being denied participation in the Olympic Games other than by inadequate performance when he could have won a gold? But that's, that's irrelevant. <laughs> you know, he cheated. That is absolutely irrelevant.